Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5, 10 and 12 to 14. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by the Dean. Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Who is the greatest? Muhammad Ali? Remember the old... Jibe as he got ready for his puncher. Not that I'm a boxer. My dad was. That's another story. <laughs> but uh, but he uh, he entertained us with his rhyme, the great Cassius Clay or Muhammad Ali. Humans, though, are not often content to be the best that they can be. They prefer, usually, and I include all of us in this, to compare themselves with something else or someone else. It's not enough to be great, even. One has to be the greatest. <laughs> of course, such a thought guarantees that most of us are in the loser pile. Only one can be the best. Only a few of us are likely to be great. I was reminded by someone long ago. There's, a, there's always plenty of room in the ordinary pile. Though I'm reminded that there's only one Jeff Miller, and that's enough, I hear the cry. Jesus provides the age-old issue of greatness with a new slant as he talks to his disciples. It's a typical rabbinical discussion going on, perhaps a bit erudite, but it's one that's actually about their own community life. We know that from other accounts, but here in this uh, Matthew account, it's the only one where Jesus places the, uh, 
the next bit of the passage within that greatness story. The next bit of the passage shows us in as much as what Jesus does as as what he says, his response to that age old human question, who is the greatest? He calls a child whom he puts among them. That in itself is quite a radical prophetic move. In first century Jewish life, uh, children were more than to be seen and not heard, were really regarded as of little importance in the important things of life. I'm not saying they didn't love their children, of course, I'm sure that was very much the case. But it was uh, and not until they became aged uh, to for bar mitzvah that they would be considered as having views on anything or be taken notice of in those ways. So that this group of disciples, considering the age old question, suddenly are faced with a child in the middle of them, then that's quite counterintuitive. It gets more though. He doesn't just call the child and then place him right in the middle. He says this, unless you, you change and become like children, then you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. This is really radical and really revolutionary. The child normally is there to receive instruction, to be molded and formed in becoming adult. Here, Jesus suggests the opposite, that the child is indeed the teacher, that it is the child who will instruct us in the ways of real greatness. And this child metaphor is at the heart of much of what the Gospels talk about in Matthew. It, it isn't quite simple as child, it's little one. And note that Matthew uses it again and again, but a big passage that comes to mind for me is Matthew 25, uh, where the separation of the sheep and the goat, and Jesus says, uh, as he separates, or whatever you did to the least of my brothers and sisters, and that least is the word for child here. The little ones, the smallest, not the greatest, in human terms. And Jesus goes on in this passage to suggest to us that it's not your size, thank God, your innocence, your power, your skill. It's not that that makes you great. And in verse 4, he defines the quality that makes for greatness. And what is this quality? Humility. Greatness is not in how good you are, rather in your awareness of what you are not. It is knowing that you are least that will actually make you great. For in the Christian tradition, in the teaching of Jesus, it is quite clear that grace, the loving goodness of God, poured out on his people. Grace, grace alone, shatters the pride hidden in our search and our desire and our yearning for greatness. It's not that the child or the little one among us has in themselves a quality that leads to greatness. It's rather that their humility, their lack of the qualities of greatness, that make them easy, easy to receive grace upon grace. Receptacles, depth that abounds in their understanding or their welcome of grace among them. And the more that God pours grace into us, the greater we can become. Can we change? Can I change? Can I learn humility? 
perhaps a starting point is to accept that I'm not great, that I belong in the ordinary pile, but with God's goodness, with his grace, who knows what God will make of me and of you. So an alternative verse to Cassius's one. Tread the earth gently, land like a snowflake, when you're yearning for greatness, only grace will you make. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection? Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. O oh Christ, too, has taught that the first shall be last and the last first. We pray today for the little ones of our world. For children and young people who have no voice in how their future will be organised, how this planet will be cared for, how their countries will be run. For adults with learning disabilities and all who rely on others to protect them and to guide them through life. For those who live in poverty, for the powerless, for the people who are counted as worthless in a world of twisted values. We pray for them, that their interests might always be taken to heart and protected by those in whose power it is to do so. Lord, have mercy. We pray O oh Christ, for the children and young people in our lives. For the children and young people of the cathedral community. For our choristers. For the children in the congregation. For all who have a connection with our place of worship and to look to us for example and guidance in the way of faith. As we teach and support them, Lord, give us grace to learn from them too, that our priorities, when misplaced, might be challenged by their wisdom and innocence. May our place of worship be a place of inclusion, where their place is honoured and they are helped to grow. Christ, have mercy. Finally, O oh Christ, you challenge us adults to become like children if we wish to enter your kingdom. So give us a childlike humility and a loving dependency on you in all that we do. 
where we think too much of ourselves or get too big for our boots, Lord. Remind us that we are utterly dependent on your grace and goodness for all that is important in our lives. May we never take that for granted. Lord, have mercy. God of peace, who in the poverty of the blessed Clare gave us a clear light to shine in the darkness of this world. Give us grace so to follow in her footsteps that we may at the last rejoice with her in your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God give you grace to follow him in faith, hope, love and humility and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you have enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the next upload or visit the Cathedral's website. The information is on the screen. Now may God bless you and watch over you and those you love this day and always.